foundations, by their very nature, have to operate at 30,000 feet. You get disconnected from the real work on the ground. You know, people actually building stuff and making stuff and selling stuff. And so it's really important to have the discipline and the self-awareness to get into the field and start seeing what's happening at the ground level. There are people doing amazing things in their communities. Part of the role of people that support entrepreneurs is to recognize that heroism. When you sit in an office all day, you just don't learn about these things. I'm eight months now into this role at the foundation. You know, we're building things, we're implementing a strategy, but there's still that love of getting out there and exploring. There's this renewal happening throughout the heartland. You see entrepreneurs bursting in Kansas City, you see it throughout the whole region. This invisible energy, that spark that makes America so wonderful, this deep resilience and the sense that, well, you know, we can work it out. We can work with our friends, our colleagues, and our community members to find solutions to problems. I think the thing I wanted most was someone who was not just a great road companion, but someone who had great insight into entrepreneurship. And I think that's what my friend Phil Wickham brings. He's got that ability to think both of the big picture and also to work at the granular level of entrepreneurs and startup companies. America has got this archetype of the great American road trip, the sense of great adventure. If you take what you learn to heart, you end up changing course and making things better. I'm Victor Wong. My friend Phil Wickham and I are on the road, traveling the heartland to listen to local entrepreneurs who are starting and growing their businesses. We want to see communities in action and share the stories of people who are inspiring hope and renewing our economy. You got the navigation working? Uh, we just go up to 29, right? I don't know. <laughs> there we go. We are, we are already, we're already screwed and we've barely started yet. I'm a venture capitalist. Don't ask me what to do. You know, if we get there, I'll take credit for it. If we get lost, I'll fire you. <laughs> well, you got a long walk home, my friend. <laughs> this tech startup boom has been happening in places like Silicon Valley and California and New York and Boston. But what's been untold is the fact that it's happening in these places in the middle of the country. Yet it's still small, it's still kind of emerging, and sure. it's kind of an interesting point in time just to capture it and see what's happening and where is it going. For a long time now, uh, people have been concerned about the loss of manufacturing jobs and the fact that America feels like it's losing its competitive edge. You know, now's the chance to kind of see, well, how's it being, how are people adjusting? How are they adapting? How are they competing in the world? And the industries that underwent the kind of disruption that creates real opportunity were urban-centric industries such as advertising, marketing, financial services. You were drawing deep talent from those environments and you also had access to those industries for partnerships and so forth. And that's what strikes me now is like you can you could have someone you know roll out of bed in whatever city they live in and they could 3D design some new right. prototype and so within a few hours, you can create a, uh, a new product from scratch and build out your entire supply chain and your entire distribution chain with a few clicks and a few buttons. Used to be that you had to choose between, you know, maybe a semi-dire career, like being a corporate lawyer for 40 years to create material wealth, or you chose something you loved and you suffered materially. But now I think not only is that not the case, I think it's actually, you're more inclined to do well materially if you actually pursue the thing that really gives you the most satisfaction. I wonder why though people don't do that. Like I think there's a, maybe it's, they don't believe it. It's fear. There's a natural visceral fear response. I think a lot of the time when you're advising ecosystems or advising people in general, you want to de-romanticize. The, the process of innovation. It's not romantic, it's a grind. It's a, total grind. it's a grind, but the key is, is you gotta pick the grind you love. The question that arises now is, is there a subset of, pop, you know, of, the, of the entrepreneurial population that wants to live in a place like Omaha or Cedar Rapids? And are the, are the industries in proximity to them undergoing the same kind of disruption? And the feeling is, yeah. For the next 10, 20 years, you could really see you know, cities like this on the rise. So I'm fascinated to actually get there and see it.